young people with me have changed cinema. We all just have to think of the Thank cinema. You. Thank you, Dibakar and Abey. We had to think of the cinema of my growing up years, which of course ages me, when the soundtrack was Dishoom Dishoom and Bachao, when the hero's first and last love was his mother, and when a heroine's heaving bosom was always sari clad. Well, now when we can watch Love, Sex and Dhoka, Dev Ji, and Delhi Belly, we know it's truly a cinematic and cultural revolution. And thank you so much, Dibakar Banerjee, Abhi Deol, for joining me to discuss that tonight. In movies, Bollywood is scared to make Dibakar, but we made Love, Sex and Dhoka. Well, I, I think, uh, well, first of all, I'm not much of a stress buster. So um, I think if you're asking about the stories that Hol uh, Bollywood is afraid to make, I think Bollywood is afraid to make the stories that India is afraid to see. And uh, I just saw the AV over here, and it was largely sexual in content. And what happens is that when we make films about some kind of sexual freedom, it actually helps us elude the real issues. And uh, political, political content or social content. And I don't think we have much to cheer about the fact, at least I don't cheer about the fact that we're all feeling happy because we have now slightly more sexual content in our films. And they, that makes us a little more like France mm -hmm. or Switzerland. And that's a comfortable thought to be with, but probably the films that should be made even more are hardly about sex. They should be about what the previous discussion was all about. Mm -hmm. And that's the film, those are the films that India is afraid to see. And uh, that's the problem that we face when we try and make, it, make those films. For example, the most unkind cut in Love, Sex, or Dhoka was not the sex scenes. It was a scene where a man about to kill another man tells him, Choti ke kutte. And he says that, Bhagwan ne sabke liye ek jaga banai hai. Aur tere ko ghar mein kya ghusne diya, tu apni jaga bhul gaya, Choti ke kutte, and then he kills him. And the censor board asked us to, re you know, remove that line. They were extremely generous, mm -hmm. uh, extremely uh, warm to the sexual content in the scene. And, <laughs> You know, they just made us cut about four seconds. But that whole illusion to caste, and caste being the reason for someone's life, someone's life to be taken, was cut from the film. And I tried to fight it, but I was told that if your film incites some kind of violence, caste violence and some lives are lost, will you take um, you know, responsibility for it? I couldn't answer for it very clearly. And anyway, I was anxious to release my film. So I kind of agreed with the cuts. But I think the films that Bollywood is afraid to make are about the elephants that we are continuously deeming invisible in our room. I think taking off from that point, because uh, Dibakar talking the director's point of view, but for an actor, the kind of roles we choose, and we've had so many young directors talk about how difficult it is to convince a star in the conventional term to take on that movie, and the movie actually gets legitimacy only when a big star like an Amir Khan, like Abhay or somebody signs on. People have said, you wish you had many more Abhay Deols with the right surname, the right looks, who would actually act in movies like this. Do you find that as an actor, what are the kind of choices, considerations, you actually look at when you're taking on a movie? I think um, with me, it was a little different. When I started out, I, I didn't find success. I wasn't a star at all. And so for me, um, it was actually easier. I had nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. I was already pretty much a pretty flop actor, you know. So, yeah, so it was a good thing because I was like, great, so the Bollywood routine is definitely out for me. Uh, I knew that I had to try and find a niche for myself, and, and then I went out looking for scripts and directors. And it is true. Um, it's, I don't know how the topic is called what Bollywood is afraid to make. I don't think it's Bollywood afraid to make. It's, it's just uh, what you're afraid to show. You know, and there are various reasons for that. Like Dibakar said, eh, you know, you're afraid to show this because the country's afraid to see it on one level. I think that um, sex is something that's the easiest thing to sell. And um, this is actually not answering your question, is it? No, I'm just saying because you made interesting choices in your movies. You started off, as you said, yeah. with the Dave D's and the more unconventional, yeah. but now you had this Zindagi Na Milgi Dubara, yeah. you become a more conventional bo Bollywood yeah, star. Yeah. Does that actually hem you in? Does it make it more difficult for you now to make alternative choices? Um, uh, sometimes, yes. Uh, like, if I want to earn my living and my monies, 
I only get the biggest offers of the big Bollywood formula films. Oh. So it's very difficult to turn down a lot of money and then turn towards the subject that I truly want to do and earn almost nothing with it. If anything else, maybe pay out of my own pocket to complete a film, which I've done before. Yeah, and that happens, you know, and, and that gets very frustrating. I, you only would wish... your movie? <laughs> I did offer to pay for the soundtrack. <laughs> Well, both, <laughs> both of you have actually got Shanghai now, which is a political thriller, but interestingly set in Shanghai and not perhaps Chhattisgarh or Jharkhand or the issues which I said uh, which are focused in India. It is set in Chhattisgarh or Jharkhand or any other. It's not about the Shanghai. It's not about the Shanghai. It's, it's, it's the Shanghai of our dreams. And it's the Shanghai that we want to be overnight. And it's a, it's, it's, uh, it's a hell called a small Indian town to which heaven called SEZ is coming. And, uh, you know, there are, there are Devdoots and there are Yamdoots and, you know, we get to see what, happen, what happens when something like that comes to an undeveloped town. Mm -hmm. And that's what the film is about. And he is uh, Pillai Anand, uh, Anand Krishnan. He is an IS officer. He represents the powers that be of the country. If he had his way, he would block my film, uh, Love, Sex, or Dhoka. And it's about the other characters in the film who are trying to become Shanghai overnight. And that's what the film is about. In fact, that's actually, uh, ironically, completely out of coincidence, Shanghai is quite topical for the moment, this whole fight over corruption and the whatnot. What Dibakar has done with Shanghai is he's sort of, and that's the beauty of film, right? It, it, it gives you a bit of an insight. It opens up a window into a culture, into a people. And what I like about Shanghai, the script and the way he's done it, is he hasn't, it hasn't gone into this intellectual space. It hasn't become preacher or anything. He just shows you things for what they are. And it is about SEZs coming out. It is about displacement. It is about progress uh, at the cost of what, though? You know, there are the many, the middle class, uh, the townsfolk, let's say the town that is in the film, that are benefiting from it. But the little guy whose land has been taken, who hasn't been compensated, what happens to him? And we don't talk about such things. And, and going by the topic of this debate about what is Bollywood afraid to make, whenever you go up to them and say, oh, I have a film about displacement, you know, secretly, you know, and I can read this in the eyes. Oh, God, it's going to be an arty farty movie. And you yeah. Have to fix it up. You have to fix it up. Yeah, you have, how am I going to sell yeah. it? You know, it's going to be preachy and intellectual. So you kind of get caught in this space where you want to entertain. You know you can. You don't want to sell to the lowest common denominator or take your audience as fools. You want to treat them with intelligence, give them a little bit, of, show them a little bit about your art and your culture, but at the same time, not, you know, take away some of the most serious things that are happening because there's so much happening in our country today. And yeah. to the item number. Uh, yeah, and yeah, why not? Put in an item number if it helps. You know, that it entertains, great, we want to entertain, but yeah. you're not going to go one extreme. You're not going to be either just fully commercial or fully arty farty, you know? but the boundaries are getting blurred. But Dibakar, one trend perhaps to be witnessed in Bollywood is the film seems to have become increasingly urbanized. And like earlier, the blockbusters of big films which you've ever seen, which are shown in like the smallest towns of India, which were single screen theaters, which are Pesa Vasool. You've got films now which are made for niche audiences, multiplex audiences. The big sellers still in India, or the real India, which would be the Salman Khan, uh, big uh, Ajay Devgan ones, which actually draw in people. So in a way, the issues you're addressing don't actually reach a large mass of India. Quite true. But that, if I take that as a reason not to make the film, I would. Then I wouldn't make anything. But you're right. But there is a, there is a rider to that. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's purely money. Because uh, what's happening to Bollywood is actually happening to all of India. Because most of our wealth and most of our, the monetization of that wealth exists in urban centers. And the rest of India are those large, dark craters that used to exist in Africa in the 19th century. So when we make a film today, we make far more money out of multiplexes. Mm -hmm. And our profit margins on multiplexes are far higher because people like you and me, who have money to burn, they come. There, there's another reason. The reason is that people like you and me and all the people over here, I'm assuming that we are more or less settled with our lives. We have enough money to buy our SUVs and we have enough money to fit a you know, uh, window of air conditioner in our rooms. After we've done that, we might have some time to think, oh, whither are we going? Oh, India is this, India is this, pass the caviar. For the larger segment of the, of the country, uh, the, the life is such a fight, and life leaves you with so little time to ponder about whether are we going, 
Salman Khan is the legitimate answer to all their problems because that is the only place. And I am not, yeah, and I'm, I'm not being sarcastic at all. That is, the, I've sat down in air-cooled theaters and watched people see Salman or any other Bollywood hero because that is the only place where you think that your life has some meaning. Otherwise, if you have a three-hour commute from Virar to uh, 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 South Bombay and you're chopping vegetables and you're going back and then you're cooking those vegetables, after that, you don't have any time to see LSD. You will see Ready or Bodyguard. <laughs> but there's no choice. There's no choice. We have, I mean, they're, they're kind of down there in that, you know, dark space in the map. And that's the only choice that they have. As a the younger generation of Bollywood actors, what is the aspirational goal? Is it to be that Salman, Ajay Devgan, whichever Khan who reaches out across India? Or is it to be an Abhidhar who's true to the scripts you like? Because as a Bollywood actor, you have to balance both, of course. I, I entered the industry, um, I, I love movies because I could walk into a cinema, watch something and be touched by it literally. And what I felt was lacking in Bollywood was that it was all larger than life. Like you spoke about Salman Khan, whoever, whatever. It's, it's, it's about escapism. It's about catching that train from Virar to town and forgetting your woes. Um, I didn't want to be a part of that. I wanted to sort of reflect the fact that you would catch a train from Virar and go to South Bombay to escape your mundane life and aspire to be Salman Khan or what have you. I, I was more interested in doing something like that. Nobody was really interested in making something like that. You've had to sort of push and push and push your way into it to make this possible. Um, what's interesting is ever since the economy opened up in the 90s, uh, you know, and television went 24 hours, and uh, the markets opened up, suddenly there was Western goods available, foreign films released at the same time. A generation grew up more exposed, a middle class grew up which was more well-traveled and exposed to the world. And suddenly when films, com commercial Bollywood films started flopping, I was surprised at the powers that been. Boy, I was surprised, crashing and saying, "Yeah, kya ho gaya? You know, why is it flopping? I did everything. I got the five songs. I got the sex. I got this, and yet my films are not selling. And that's purely because now you don't have an audience that is unaware. So my desire was to come in and appeal to that audience because that's the audience that will grow, not the ignorant audience. Which I don't even know if we had an ignorant audience. I think we had an ignorant, ignorant industry that didn't care to take a chance, that didn't care to go out there and show something." The basket, is that the danger that that's the new formula now? I'm sure filmmakers like Anurag and you find producers coming to you and saying, Acha, wo LSD jaisa film banao. How, do, how do you keep reinventing that? Can I say something? You do a film and it's successful, they don't want to make Dev D. Nain, nain chalega, nain chalega. Then Dev D works. Now they're like, Sir, you have something like Dev D to make. Exactly. And you're like, No, I want to make, you know, Shanghai. They're like, No, sir, that won't work. <laughs> how do you deal with that? Uh, well, I, I, I mean, I didn't choose the world I live in. I, I, I do choose the way I live it. So what I do is I hustle, I survive, and uh, try and see that I get a little more money than my last budget. I'm trying to be very pragmatic here because it's so easy to give a bombastic answer to this. But what I really do is I try and get a little more money for my next film, and I still try and do it about 30% to 40% cheaper than anyone else in Bollywood would dare to make it by planning and by or throwing, us work those extra by days giving, and hours. giving time to it and all that, by planning, <laughs> planning. <laughs> so, uh, so, so what happens is the producer gets a film, yes, there is a little bit of artist here, but let's go to So that's what happens and I get to make my next film. What happens is that we are surviving on the edge. I am a producer of most of my films, so I know the figures. And uh, they are shameful compared to uh, a bodyguard or a ready or a free idiots or whatever. So what you do is you survive on the edge and you try and garner as much goodwill through the elite media, like you guys, so that the, it's true. So the producers, when they want a prestige project, as you go film, I got to banger ready ke bodyguard ke, then they come to us, so it's a brand, and we are surviving. We are surviving like guerrilla rats. 
that's I think that's a, lot, a lot yes. of it is that people don't want to spend that extra money to market and distribute a film if it <coughs> does not conform to commercial norms. Mm -hmm. So the possibility of it breaking a number, because like for example, Manorma released in 60 cinemas and there was no marketing and nobody knew it came out. So nothing is going to break out unless it is propped up or supported by the industry. So it may be that the public wants to see it, but the public will not be aware that it's out there because no distributor marketer has put it out there. So that's why you're balancing being on uh, Sydney's India's Most Desirable and the Thing Summit. The, w w the real up here somewhere in between. You can be both. And what happens is that one film helps the other and it kind of builds up a domino effect. So that's what happens. Okay, the Thinking Woman's pin up, uh, mo Thinking Woman's Most Desirable. Well, I'm going to call in another uh, actor to join us, Imran Khan, and of course, of <laughs> Delhi Belly and the Fame and Imran. Imran, you've been listening uh, to Dibakar and Abhay, and I just want to talk to you a bit on the next topic, how the suits are killing Indian cinema. Are they? Because you just heard Dibakar talking about how much we do need those suits in a way, but where's the pitfalls? Is your mic working? Hi. Uh, actually, the, the thing that I want to talk about does really tie into what Dibakar sure. and Abhay have been talking about. Uh, th there's, there's been a, a growing trend currently in the industry of corporates coming in, of international production houses coming in, from uh, Universal to Sony, Warner Brothers, all of these guys now have production offices in India. And while they brought in a lot of very good practices, there is much more transparency, uh, that whole Bollywood underworld nexus is pretty much gone, except for a couple of people, you know who you are. <laughs> uh, the, the, it's, the, the, the industry is working in a much cleaner way, certainly. But the problem is, I feel that we have started to lose a clear creative vision. Mm -hmm. There was a point when films were made by, you would have a, a, a producer, you have a Yash Chopra, who will say, I want to make this film, this is what I believe in, and he will write a story, he will narrate it to a dozen people, and they will come on board, and you'd make a film that way. Today, guys enter it looking at it as a business. The soul is being sucked out. It, it's, it is very much a money-making endeavor. They, they will enter and say, well, we have a hundred crores lying around, let's invest in, in movies. You, you can't invest in movies. You, 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 you will enter with a spreadsheet and they'll add it up. They'll say, okay, fine, you have Imran Khan, he will get you this much on the weekend. You add in Deepika Padukone, she will get you that much over the weekend. You add in these music composers, Vishal and Shekhar, they will get you this much over the weekend. So I think we can invest about 25 crores safely. Delhi what Belly would never have been picked up by a suit. Delhi Belly was rejected by every producer in the industry. Every suit you knew. I, I, I know this for a fact. I, I mean, I've, I've done the film. The script did the rounds of every producer in Bombay, and every single one of them passed on it, without exception. I have friends who work in a lot of studios. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was a film which got rejected by a bunch of studios, because who wants to see Nasiruddin Shah starring in a film? That film was called A Wednesday. Mm -hmm. It turned out to be a pretty good film. Uh, another, f another film which had a very, very promising script, it was a new director, and he wanted to make a film with a new boy. Again, it didn't get picked up. My friend who worked in the studio was very upset because uh, she felt that it, it was a very promising project. Uh, it turned out to be a film called Udan, which, again, very, very good film. That film got picked up finally when uh, you had Anurag attached to it. But just as a script with a director who was a first-timer who wanted to make a film with a new boy, mm -hmm. the film could not get picked up. That's because you don't have guys who will sit and read a script and see merit in it. They will just look at the numbers. So when, when they're deciding what film to make, distribution will have their say, and they'll say, well, you know, if we release the film in this many screens, the, the per print cost is this mm -hmm. much, doesn't make sense. Marketing will look at it and say, but who do you put on the poster? Isn't one of the huge problems also now the whole instant classification of hit or flop? I mean, I recently went to see a so-called blockbuster. It was the second day and the hall was pretty much empty, but that same film had been trumpeted as a hit. There was a hit party on the day it was released. <laughs> how, how does that happen? I'll do a separate show on that, that but that, it's true. That's, There's a whole that's bunch marketing of and PR, man. I mean, you, you, you can't... Uh... You, you can't, you can't take that stuff seriously. The film is released. No, but really, how does that work? Because I'm, I'm sure all of you have attended those. You have hit music launch parties for your movies. You have hit parties on the day the movie is released. And often, sometimes halls can be empty. How does that work, Imran? You know, uh, 
that ties into the image that people are trying to trying to project. And certainly, I mean, you have so many people. You you have your PR guys. You've got the the the, the marketing guys in the studio who will say, if we can get uh, a front page story on this paper, if we can get a news a, uh, a news plug on such and such TV channel, it will increase awareness. It, this is all marketing stuff. But this is all stuff that comes in much later. This is post-release. I'm talking about the actual idea of making a film. Mm -hmm. The idea of someone having a creative vision. Uh, Delhi Belly. Had it not been for Amir, who, being the one guy who read the script and said, I want to make this, that film would not have been made. Uh, pe people come up to me all the time and say, you know, when are you going to do another film like Delhi Belly? Who makes films like that? There are a handful of filmmakers around. Uh, there are a handful of producers who, who will make stuff like this. I mean, the, the Bakar, I'm sure, uh, with every film that you've made, the kind of struggle that you would have to, to get financing. Oh, you have no idea how good a hustler I am. So, so <laughs> I, 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 I kind of... I kind what of, do you promise the producer? Well, the first thing I promise is that it's less budget and nothing will happen. And, you know, critics will give three and a half stars, four stars, so lag jayega. <laughs> I like the other people who would say, forget the critics, they don't matter. At least you say, critic can't no, claim No, because you see, this is where the other half of Ibran's answer comes from, that yes. the people that we are calling the suits are people like you and me. They come from advertising agencies, they come from event management companies, they come from media companies, and now they are coming from FM FMCG companies. The biggest bastions of FMCG companies are breaking and they are joining film production companies or whatever. So what they also want is a feeling, and this is the other part of the suitness of today's films. They want to be associated with films like Delhi Belly or LSD or whatever, for, ev or they be, for every film that happens, they want to make one more film because they want to be discussed and they want to go to evening cocktail parties and talk in elite English-speaking circles class, yeah. high about, class about high-class movies like us, so that helps us. So frankly, I'm not complaining. The second thing is that... To be low, low class and get those thousands of crores or however many crores I would love that. Says. I would love that if I see the thing is the reason why I wouldn't make bodyguard because it's not for me to make and I'll get bored making it. That's all. That's all. I mean, but on the other hand, if we say that suits are killing cinema, I think it's a bit saying that India is a hot country and you know we all sweat. It doesn't change anything by saying that. What you need to understand is that the suit is a nine to seven jobber. His mandate is to get private equity and make lots of films and show valuation, mm -hmm. rise his company's share level values and sell out for a golden handshake. That's the basic mandate of every corporation, which yes, makes that, that any kind of problem. It's not a business. No, so, so you what can't enter it as an investment. Well, but the thing is that the moment you're making the corporate company, they have to answer to their board. So what they'll do is they'll take five bodyguards, one Delhi Belly, after Delhi Belly has been made, Delhi Belly 2, and one LSD or something like that, and they'll monetize it. But we are the survivors. I'm saying that we make what we want and suits will follow. Imran, how do you, how do you These think? guys follow. I mean, yes. uh, t l l let me take you back a couple of years. Uh, when The Bung was being pitched uh, as, a, as a concept, it wasn't a very hot film. Throughout the time that it was being shot, it was in post-production, it was not a film that people were anticipating. When the promos came out, that's when it started uh, gathering attention. Oh, so, I completely, Dabang, I, that's why I didn't take the uh, uh, example of Dabang. Dabang is a maverick film. Yeah. Dabang is it, it an a, example a of a huge budgeted Delhi belly. Yeah. No, I mean, completely agree. <laughs> It is, in terms of style and in terms of promotion, it was different. It was. Imran, but we talk about the investment, the equity, but aren't Bollywood actors in a way also more calculated than before? Well, it's fine to do a Delhi Belly, well, it's fine to do a Devdi. You also want to do the Karan Johar movie, you also want to do the big movies, the big directors, because there is a cast hierarchy almost in Bollywood, where there's, and that's just a reality which no actor can escape. Would you agree with that? I, I make no bones about the fact. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm deeply rooted in commercial cinema. Everything that I have today comes from doing uh, straight up fun commercial films. What I'm sad about is that I don't get the chance very often to, to move out. Delhi Belly is a flash in the pan. You know, you, uh, you don't get scripts like that very often. You don't get people willing to back projects like that very often. Here and there, uh, a couple of things have come up where I see interest in something and I'll say, okay, fine, you know, 
can we make this? Oh, but you know, sir, I mean, of course, we'd love to work with you, but maybe this is not the best thing for you. We have a really nice rom-com. Why don't you look at this instead? Mm -hmm. And now th this, is, th this is what I get. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's, it's bleak out there. Abhi, does, do you find that, do you find that uh, mainstream success puts you in almost an invisible suit or straight jacket, that your choices are now much more limited after Zindagi Milagina Adubara than it would have been just after Dev D, if you really want to make it big in that uh, pan-Indian sense? Actually, quite the opposite. Um, it, it's really up to me at the end of the day. And um, so today, when I say, you know, thank you for that offer, but this is the film I want to do, they're more likely to do that film now. Right, that's good. Because that's, 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 that's what changes it. I, How do stars stay real? Do you find that, that stars after successes actually change? Is it as easy for you to speed dial them? Not, not Again, it's an individual choice of the star. I mean, there are many stars who've shown that they can go away from the, you know, beaten uh, path and reinvent themselves. Not many, that but many? few. Okay. That I just, yeah, yeah, a few. I just want to add one more bit of whatever I think is my wisdom to this is that I can, when I say, matlab, likhwa lo aap log, if the suits and the corporates hadn't been there, Films like Dave D and, sorry, LSD and Dave D wouldn't have happened. Right. Because uh, another aspect, another advantage of having corporations and suits is that when they make big films and when they have profits, they have a little bit of money left to play with smaller, edgier films, which individual producers earlier wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. They will make a film, they would take the money from that film and they'll stake their life, their house and their car and everything onto another film. And therefore, more chances of that producer making a bodyguard than an LSD. So suits also help. And Imran, taking that point, uh, yes, go ahead. I think so somewhere these guys are, uh, when they decide to make a prestige project, uh, as you call it, it, uh, I think it is someone in the in the in, in the uh, corporate, in the corporation who's saying, listen, man, we've done all this, we've made the money, let's make something good. Right. So it is still right. a. a, a an emotional uh, motivation. Absolutely. It's, it's not a business motivation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is what, what I wish we had more of. Right. I wish we had more people who would say, listen, let's make an interesting film. Mm -hmm. and, and then use the suit to sell it. I think that perhaps that's yeah. distinct. Use the suit and, to and sell it, but what, what use about the passion the rest of it, What about the rest of it later? Uh, when we started off doing Delhi Belly, I, had, I went into the film thinking, dude, there's not a chance this film is going to release. There's no way it will clear censors. If somehow we manage to get it past censors and release the film, nobody's going to watch it. I mean, maybe 1,000, 1,500 people will watch the film if we're lucky. Mm -hmm. that, right. uh, that, that was honestly the way that all of us looked at it when we made the film. And, but Amir never approached it like that. He said, this is the way the film needs to be made. Let's make it honestly. Mm -hmm. We put everything into it. And when it turned out to be the, the kind of money spinner that it was, we were all taken aback. Right. I, I, was, I was flabbergasted. I never thought it, it, the, the film had that kind of earning potential. Well, that is a wonderful surprise and I think a great uh, for pushing the boundary of cinema so far. And let me just call our next guest tonight, who's uh, tonight, sorry, that's the prime time hangover, our next guest this afternoon, <laughs> who's going to talk. Uh, Kiran, uh, Kiran Rao joins us. Thanks so much, uh, Kiran. Showed she doesn't need any suits and wants to talk today about how we need to nurture creativity, how we need to really focus and make sure that it's not a flash in the pan. Uh, Kiran Rao, what would you like to say on nurturing creativity? Yeah, today's uh, discussion has been really interesting because I think uh, we always look at the film industry as um, a nice way to look at how people are not taking chances and not doing interesting things and, you know, uh, producers are too scared to do um, things that they feel are not, you know, hit formulaic films. But I think we've seen a change in the last few years and that I think has been due to a few people taking those chances. You have to understand also that it's an economy and uh, people put money in and need to know that they're going to be safe and won't have to mortgage their houses and, you know, move mm -hmm. out. Um, but I think what, what's important for us to learn is that there is an audience for all kinds of cinema, um, in fact, all kinds of art. and what, what I feel is the need of the art and what really does make sure that creativity isn't accidental is um, investing in public spaces that promote the arts and culture for their own sake. We need it. We need arts funding. 
we need spaces for films like mine. I mean, I, uh, if Amit hadn't agreed to produce a film like Dhobi Ghat, I don't think I would have made it on video. I would have, you know, traveled with it, done a little bit of, you know, showing it here and there. But I certainly couldn't have opened with 250 prints and, uh, you know, gone to all kinds of places and, and opened up a discussion. I mean, people can either like or hate a film, but ultimately, you know, films are there to provoke, to engage, to, you know, to do more than just entertain. And uh, not all films, certainly, but the, the, the arts that actually do that need encouragement and cannot function uh, in the same environment that a commercial product functions. And according to me, that, that needs to be encouraged. If you, we want to make these films that succeed, uh, we co there are not that many Amirs around who will take that chance, mm -hmm. who will stand up and say, look, I put my money where my mouth is. I'll make Peeply Live, I'll make uh, Dhobi Ghat, I'll make Delhi Belly, which Nobody, want, nobody wanted to make Lagan, I mean, so, uh, so I think it, it, needs to, it needs to become, uh, uh, an inf, you know, a, a, a something that we, we visualize, we, we, you know, kind of have some foresight about. Do you feel the current Bollywood system does actually stifle creativity? Is that the real issue that you almost need a Prithvi theatre-like model for cinema? Certainly, a Prithvi theatre-like model for cinema would be amazing. Uh, and I for one, we'll definitely work towards that because I feel, of course, public-private partnerships are important and we need to be involved with that process. We have to work towards the world that we want to see. But I don't think it's uh, that, that the Hindi film industry is entirely without, you know, any creativity. At the end of the day, they are fulfilling a very deep need and have done so for a hundred mm -hmm. years and successfully. And, uh, and have certainly, like Debakar said, given a lot of people a lot of joy. I mean, there is a need that Salman Khan fills and you can't, you know, that, that these films are needed as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not to say that that's the only thing that needs to exist. According to me, we need to um, look at culture as a priority in this country. There is little or no funding for the arts at all, barring private funding. Uh, Anything that exists like a Prithvi or an NCPA or the few, you know, um, you know, philanthropic uh, Godrijes and Mahindras yes. doing things. Uh, but for them, we would have nothing going on outside of Bollywood. And you can't blame Bollywood for that. They're doing their job. What is their primary job? The Parker's point, the films that India is afraid to see, do you find that that is, the, that is an issue as well? That we find in the creative filmmakers, they do look at urban issues, issues of space, issues of isolation, but the hard-hitting political issues, the Balraj Sani kind of films that were made once upon a time, just don't, there seems to be no market or focus on those kind of films anymore. Yeah, I do think that's uh, something to think about. I wonder why that is. I mean, uh, certainly we've made progress on every other front and I think the last five years have shown that we can do it as well. But um, I think it, the, uh, the fact is that uh, at the end of the day, there are certain systems in place that encourage things to be a certain way. Multiplexes came in and changed a little bit, uh, but, but didn't uh, do what, say, an art house cinema can do in a city like Bombay or Delhi or, uh, or, or you know, other kinds of arts ventures can do in, in mm -hmm. smaller towns and cities. So um, I think there's, there's space for, for both to exist. It needs to, it needs to, I, I, it, you know, since, yeah. you, since you took my question, sure. I just amplify yeah, my course. question. See, okay. there's, a, there's a fundamental dichotomy here. You've called four guys from Bollywood, I mean, three guys and one girl from Bollywood, and you're saying that, what is wrong with Bollywood? Why is the Bollywood system killing creativity? All four of us are reasonably creative in our own ways. There is no Bollywood system. Bollywood never sits around a table and passes laws that this is our system and this is the way we'll do. <laughs> Bollywood is what we are. Bollywood is about greed for money. Bollywood is about, uh, uh, you know, again, entrapment of all wealth in urban centers. Bo and that's, that's our country. Bollywood is about uh, the glorification of certain families. B Bollywood is about a sycophantic and alarmist media surrounding those issues and non-stop reporting trivia about that. And, and that is the case with most other stuff, most of the things in our country. So why are we singling out Bollywood and saying that Bollywood doesn't have creativity, our politics doesn't have creativity, our other streams of society do not have inclusiveness of people. You and us, you and I are talking in a language that perhaps 80% of the country will 
will not be able to understand very clearly. This probably will not be seen, and especially the far more topical discussion that happened before us, mm -hmm. will not be seen or understood by people who are most affected by it. And I'm not saying it's good or bad, it's just the way it is. And Bollywood just represents what we are. We are, we have become a society which is a bubble society. We are just obsessed with what we are doing within the confines of these walls and there is no connect. So that's why multiplex movies make more money. I, I mean, mean you know, so you know, and I think the change perhaps, that transition when we talked, and I talked to the Bollywood, my growing up years, there was a fact that when you talk about the multiplex and the suits, the fact is a cinema ticket now costs 150 rupees and for even a middle class or, or more if you go on the weekends, if even a 400 rupees, okay sorry, gold classes are also 800 rupees, 400 rupees in Bombay, 150 in Delhi. Bombay over release weekend, uh, this, this past weekend, 400 bucks a ticket. But yet so, profits are rising, I mean your returns right. are rising. Every, so, every. But that's something which at least Bollywood was seen as a unifier because you know the movie could be seen for 10 rupees, 20 rupees at a hall across and now it's become these different prices. How much is that an issue? Is that something that perhaps you guys should use your voices against or talk about? There is an issue in the sense that uh, I think some of us were trying to say that okay, you know, certain films which are the lower budgeted films should not be costing that much because people are charged so much per ticket. So perhaps maybe there should be a variation, but I don't think it will be really agreed in the industry that okay, if a low budget movie's ticket costed less, then I think they got scared that perhaps they would not pay that extra money for a bigger budget film, which I don't think the logic stands. <laughs> there should be that difference. I mean, overall, uh, yeah, prices are going up, and that's not, uh, it's not an area that I'm an expert at. But yeah, I do agree that ticketing should vary it. It should not be one standard high price for everything. And Imran, when you talk about yeah, the but road, uh, yeah. th 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 that is a fact. Films that are maybe more high profile, more highly anticipated films with very, very big stars, they, they do jack up the prices, particularly over the, re the release weekend. Yeah, yeah, they do. So, so say a ticket for Bodyguard for Rawan would cost more than whatever English film is releasing that weekend. Mm. They, 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 but they, they do vary the prices. No, and uh, Kiran, when we're talking about this whole issue of creativity, forget creativity, we've seen what happens again in this whole multiplex thing. When you have films where Bombay is called Mumbai, you'll see the virtual political parties picketing, there's, you know, there's a whole pressure that multiplex have to make their money. Producers or filmmakers don't have a choice but to say sorry or apologize. We saw what happened when Amir would support a certain cause, the immediate impact that what he did in his personal space which would come on his films. How is that something you're really negotiated with given that Bollywood's under so much scrutiny to stay away from any statement which could be seen as political and then impact the film? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, it's really unfortunate that uh, Bollywood becomes an easy scapegoat for uh, people. It, it's a, they're, they're very visible and it's a really easy thing to pick up a stone and hit a film uh, because it's the best way for you to actually, you know, uh, put, put up some issue that actually makes no difference to anyone's lives and yeah. certainly ruins the film weekend and weeks before the film for the filmmaker or like you said, for our lives in general. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's because of what Bollywood stands for in a sense, the Hindi film industry, what it means to people and, uh, and so, you know, po political parties find it easy to latch on to us. But coming back to creativity, I just wanted right. to say that uh, taking off from where what Dibakar said was that uh, unless we actually create, um, you know, institutions and spaces where people can, you, you were talking about how, you know, in the past we've had cinema like, um, um, you know, like yeah. even, even like Rishikesh Mukherjee and, you know, it, people who kind of sort of bridged um, the intellectuals and, you know, the mass, so-called yes. mass audience. I think what we greatly lack, uh, at least among us, is a sort of a community, is, is, is a place where we can actually all hang out, discuss, you know, coming back to the idea of the Adda, you know, mm. in a sense having having a common ground where people who all watch films can spend time together, you, the, the more theatres, more museums. It needs, we need community to be able to function and we, we actually, all of us, meet at venues like this, you know. There's right. very little interaction among uh, creative people. You're, uh, uh, you know, that functioning is, is in a true. bubble. You're, you're doing your own thing. So Dibakar actually, like he said, I'm in a, I'm in a bubble. I'm doing, whereas actually if you look at the independent film movement in America, you look at, they, you look at the French New up. Wave, you know, mm -hmm. all of them had a sense of community and that comes from having a space where you can actually um, explore, discuss, you know, interact mm -hmm. and, and uh, thrash things out, you know, and be exposed to different kinds of ideas, not just as, as a creative 
uh, as creative people, but also as an audience. You know, you come in and you actually get a chance to interact with new content. And mm -hmm. I think these spaces are really essential, and for us to actually have these spaces to build an environment and community is really important. We need support. That's, that's I can say one thing, and that's the one thing I felt earlier on, even today sometimes, is this feeling of just being alone. It's like no one's going to come out and support you. Mm -hmm. No one really cares. Are you worth the money? They'll come to you. If you're not, there's no community. You know, I know that there's X, Y, and Z people who I look up to, mm -hmm. but yeah, there's no group, there's a community. You look at the French New Wave, you look at the American New Wave, and there was this sense of community. There's, you know, this sort of romanticism in showing the finger to the rest of the industry and saying, look, we're just going to go against the grain and make our own movies, and we're going to make touch subject, and we're going to find a support system to distribute and market it to. None of that exists over here. Right. They yeah, just isn't. Exactly, because from these communities come things like your distribution arm, which is a very yeah. big part of filmmaking oh, yeah. and is expensive. And actually, unless we all, you know, kind of work together on it, we won't be able to create a pattern for alternate distribution, which I think is essential if we want to make art house films. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't function in the multiplex system. So everyone who says that the multiplex is the answer to all ills, I think not. Yes. We need art house cinemas. We need, we need more, uh, um, you know, people-friendly spaces not as expensive as multiplexes. Mm -hmm. We need more interaction with an audience. I think it's these, these things will help us to actually build this movement. It won't be just a few films. Well, her, her answer has two extremely sharply pinpointed ways of increasing creativity in Bollywood. Right. One is the day villages have purchasing power, you will have films which will vary in their subject and their telling. Mm -hmm. And you will have stories told by the people who live in those villages the issue that you raise. Second thing is, if the media stops obsessing about Bollywood, you will immediately see a great leveler of quality come in. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and third point, if criticisms for films come on Monday instead of Friday, okay, and okay. that will also actually let us decide what people are really liking. And if advertisements of how much a film has done as a way of persuading the audience to come and watch the film are banned, then also you will see an increase in creativity. Well, the battle, I agree you with can you. buy and critiques. This is a big channel has the highest ratings. TRPs are as much a bane for us every Friday as your box office ratings. You can, you can buy Friday. critiques. You can actually pay for stars. Did you guys know that? No. There's three stars. You can buy stars for your ratings for your movie. It's, it's legit. There are hey, how, are do you know, Abhay? Huh? how do you know? Because I'm in the industry, <laughs> okay. so I know. My films, I mean, I barely get money to no, make no, them. Joking, yeah, of course. Well, yeah, I mean, what he's saying is there are ways of influencing positive news about something which essentially survives on people's appreciation of it. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing, you're spin-doctoring the people into believing, and that spin-doctoring is aided by continuous tidbits of Bollywood trivia being fed to make you feel, oh, this is important, oh, this is important, and the film is not important. I, I, I yes. want to disagree a little bit because I feel like, you know, d d reducing the country's interest in Bollywood is an impossible task. There, people are actually interested in Bollywood, but we have to create an alternate model. I mean, we can't, we don't need to compete constantly with the commercial way of filmmaking. Yeah, it doesn't have to be either or. Why can't both, both exist yeah. and why can't we actually create that, spaces for different kinds of... Because there are few powers that they make comfortable no, no, not, with the way things are. Sure. Mm -hmm. no, and they don't actually, want to change it's not things. Even about powers, and anyone tries to change anything, they try and single them out. The thing is, firstly, the, we, you have to remember that the Hindi film industry has never been given any encouragement by any government ever. It was declared an industry as recently as in the last five 10 years, years or five years. But you should be happy the government's staying out. Please no, but really apart well. from that, yeah. I'll tell you what one of the drawbacks is, is that it's one of the singularly most taxed entities in the country. We're taxed both sales tax and service tax. So the government still hasn't decided whether we are a, we are a product or a service. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> entertainment tax, both. I mean, why should we have to pay a tax to entertain people? Mm -hmm. So you have to realize that producers have a, have a huge need to pad whatever production they're making because there's so much, so, so much of a pressure on them to mm -hmm. fulfill on their budgets. So they have existed by the skin of their teeth and by going by their own gut. I mean, like he said, a Mr. Yash Chopra came and said, this is the film I want to make, and he made it. There were people from across the country who just came raised money from money lenders, sold property, and, right. and in the days before the corporates, 
there are there were people who just lost their houses i mean if a film was a flop you just and well, i know because amir amir's own father he talks also, about yeah. exactly yeah, so yes. so it's not that they there are powers that be there there are independent producers who literally are living by their wits and there is no sort of studio system where there's a whole lot of people taking that decision it's it rests on you mm -hmm. but putting that aside i mean i i don't necessarily want to talk about bollywood i want to talk about how we should broaden the scope of of the arts in india and we should make it we should reclaim our streets we have to reclaim spaces for ourselves why can't we have you know more spaces that the public actually occupies and we make arts and culture a priority i mean why is it that it it, it is a commerce in bollywood and it should be let it, let that be as it is but why can't we have the alternate as well In fact, Imran, do you find that an irony that you know that Dibakar made the point that sex now is almost seen as safe. We're much more open and liberal on our screens, but off-screen there seems to be a kind of almost shrinking of openness. We've seen your PIL that you filed against the drinking age, and there is a kind of in Bangalore pubs are only open to a certain time. That in a way we are becoming more conservative in the kind of things we yes. accept in society. But sex is okay now somehow. It's not exactly okay. It's it, it, it's become sex this. It's always been okay. But now the <laughs> normal flowers and kissing flowers are being pleasured. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's something that yeah <laughs> the sense of what has come to the the point is that it gives us the illusion that we are all okay and it again takes the attention away from the real issues at hand that that's the shrinking yeah. the more conservative that we're becoming in our do you think that's yeah, a contradiction it's, it's you see it's terrifying out there it 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 really is if if, if you start to take a look at the levels of moral policing that are coming in uh in in films you're right we we do get away with uh, a, a lot of stuff which perhaps sometimes we shouldn't get away with <laughs> Big boss. You know, I never got that. It, it, it's, it's just a name. This. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> But, yeah, it's in my dirty mind, right? It, okay. It's all about how you look at it. Yeah. It, these, these things happen. No, but uh, you, you, the, the, the bucket is right. It, it does actually distract from what is happening in real life, mm -hmm. which is it, it's it's a scary thought. The the idea is that you get people hooked into the system, and they're kind of focusing on what's happening here. and their personal freedoms are being eroded around them and they they they're literally not noticing until suddenly you're st left standing on a little patch of land right. and there's there's nothing around you right it's it's, it's weird well i think this is one debate that really has so many more fascinating aspects but we'd like to leave you with the ideas that have come up from Kiran Rao Imran Khan Abhidol and Dibakar Banerjee thank you all very much and thank you all for being part of it